Hello everybody, my name is John Orange, and today we are talking about Ra and the creation of humans and life. If you don't know already, ancient Egyptian creation myths usually refer to four people. Those people are Ra, Adam, Bata, who I have no idea if I'm pronouncing right, and Neith. And yeah, Egyptian mythology gives credit to many different gods for creating the world, but today we are mainly focused on the one and only Ra. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Ray. Sorry, sorry, I, I, I got I got a little carried away there. I'm sorry. But I do seriously want to give a huge thanks to World History Encyclopedia because I will be referring to them a lot in this one. In the best known version of this story, there was nothing but water until the primordial mound called Ben Ben rose from the water as the first dry land and Ra would stand upon it. This is where he would make his first move toward the creation of the world. He cut himself and from the blood, Hu and Sia were created. Who was authority while Sia was mind? This part does get a little weird though. Ra then became aware of his solitude and proceeded to mate with his own shadow, giving birth to Shu, the god of air, and Tefnut, the goddess of moisture. Shu and Tefnut left to establish the world. What is going on right now? They were both gone a very long time, so Ra sent the Eye of Ra to search for them. Seems like Ra has some trouble with patience. The eye eventually brought Shu and Tefnut back, and when it did, Ra was so grateful he started crying tears of joy which fell onto the fertile Ben Ben and became men and women. Since the men and women had nowhere to live, Shu and Tefnut gave birth to Jeb, the god of earth, and Nut, the god of sky. They eventually gave birth to Osiris, Isis, Set, Nephthys, who I can't pronounce, and Horus the Elder. This pattern continued, but we won't talk about that now. Each of the gods was given their own sphere of influence so that order would be strictly maintained, and in today's parlance, there would be no duplication of services. The gods would henceforth care for the people, and in gratitude, the people would worship and obey the will of the gods. This relationship produced balance and harmony between the people, their gods, the earth, and the afterlife, all emanating from Ra. So obviously, Ra was a very important figure for the Egyptians, and rightfully so. Well, that about covers everything, so I'll take time. Did Ra was so grateful that he started crying tears. Crying, crying tears. I do just want to warn you, I, I do, why am I putting my hand in front of the screen? Ra sent the Eye of Ra to search for them. To search for them. To search for them. I sound so stupid. Giving birth to shoe. To shoe. To shoe. <laughs> to, to shoe. They were both gone a very long time, so Ra sent the Eye of Ra. Uh, that, I, uh. They were both gone a very long time. Oh, wait, no, that's, that's the wrong line. Ah, uh, Henry. Hello, everybody. My name is John Orange. And <laughs> oh, that's, that, that's so hard to deliver.